Welcome to Mrs. Thomas's Common Core Math Videos. Uh, today we're going to be adding and subtracting fractions and we're going to use our primes to help us out. If you haven't already, please watch the previous video on fractions and using prime factorization to simplify fractions. It's going to explain how we find the prime factorization, what it is, what prime numbers are. So for this video, I'm going to assume that you know what prime factors are and how to find them. So if we are adding two fractions together, we're combining two quantities. Maybe we have five-sixths of a tray of brownies and one-ninth of a tray of brownies, or five-sixths of a pizza and one-ninth of a pizza. We can't just add this together because these pieces aren't the same size. So what we need is that common denominator. When we're combining qu fractional quantities, we need a common denominator. And here is where our prime factorization helps us out. So if I get the prime factorization of 6, 2 times 3, and the prime factorization of 9, 3 times 3, I can see what these two numbers have in common and what they need in order to become uh, the smallest number with all the same factors, the least common multiple. So they both have a factor of 3, which is great. This one has a factor of 2 and this one doesn't. So in order to make the denominators the same, I just need to make them have the same factors. And every time I multiply a factor times the denominator to try and balance out my denominators, I'm going to multiply the exact same factor times the numerator. They always come in in pairs. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. I haven't changed this fraction. I could cancel it right back to 1 ninth, but I'm not going to because I need that 2 to get the same size pieces. So now my denominator has a factor of 2, a factor of 3, a factor of 3. Here I have a factor of 2, a factor of 3. I need another 3. And I like to circle them, especially when you're using prime factorization. This way you know which are the factors that you multiplied in and which are the factors that were there originally, especially if you don't have two colors. All right, so I have my common denominator. If they have the same factors, they are the same number. So now that I have my common denominator, I need to simplify these two terms right here, term one, term two, and then add them together. So this term is now a three times five in the numerator, which is a 15, and a three times three times two. Multiply in any order that makes you happy. Three times three is nine, nine times two is 18. Here I have one times two in the numerator, that's two, and I'm gonna have exactly the same number because I have the same factors. So now that they have the same size pieces, eighteenths, I'm going to leave that alone. That's the size of my pieces. And I want to know how many I have. Fifteen pieces plus two pieces giving me seventeen pieces. The size of those pieces, one eighteenth of a pizza or a tray of brownies. Let's try it again. All right, here's another fraction that I'm trying to add together. I got eight fifteenths plus seven twentieths. Um, I'm adding, I'm combining, I need the same size pieces, so I need my common denominator. Since the denominator is what I need to be the same, it's only the denominator that I'm going to bother finding the prime factors for. So 15 is 3 times 5, and 20 is 2 times 10, and 10, 10 isn't prime, 10 is 5 times 2. Use the factor tree if you must, but the less you use it, the faster you'll get, and speed is going to make this less painful for you. All right, I am trying to get the same factors in both denominators. I can see that they both have a 5, which is good. This denominator has two factors of 2. This denominator doesn't have any factors of 2. You can multiply 2 times 2, or you can multiply 4, right? 2 times 2 is 4, so 4 top and bottom. So now I have 2 times 2 times 3 times 5, 2 times 2 times, ah, oh, I'm missing the 3. So multiply top and bottom by 3. Okay? Now my denominators are the same. 2 times 2 times 3 times 5, 2 times 2 times, 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. Same factors, they have to be the same number. So now I'm going to combine my terms, all the multiplication in my terms, before I finally add them together at the very last step. All right, so 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 8 is 32 in the numerator. Um, you can multiply together in whichever way is fastest for you. 
I would multiply this 2 times 5 first because I know that's a 10. And 2 times 3 is 6, and 6 times 10 is 60. Here 7 times 3 is 21. Um, and this has to be 60. So I've got 32 pieces. The size of the pieces are 60ths. 21 pieces, the size of the pieces are 60ths. So altogether, size of the pieces, still 60ths, but I have 32 plus 21 of them, which is 53 60ths. Now, the question is, can I simplify this any further? Um, if you saw the simplifying fractions video, you know I would usually factor the top and the bottom and then cancel what cancels. Well, I don't have to check this number for every possible number that could be divided into it. I know my 60 is made up of only factors of 2, factors of 3, and factors of 5. Those are the only numbers I have to check the numerator for. Now, obviously not, there's no factor of 2 in there, doesn't end with an even number. There's no factor of 5 in there, doesn't end with a 5 or a 0. And 5 plus 3 is 8, so there's no 3. So I know, I'm perfectly confident that this is completely simplified. 21 is 7 times 3. Remember, 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 is divisible by 3, so I knew there was a 3 in there. Uh, 14 is 7 times 2. Numerator is 3. All right. I can see that both denominators already have a factor of 7. Uh, this one has a factor of 3, so I'm going to multiply a numerator and denominator by 3. So I have 7 times 2 times 3. I need this to be 7 times 2 times 3, so I need a factor of 2 in here. All right, so my numerator, um, oh, my denominators now are the same, same factors, 2, 7, 3, 2, 7, 3. So now I just have to simplify this fraction, simplify this fraction, and then combine them last. My numerator is now 2 times 1 or 2. My denominator is 7 times, or 2 times 3 is 6, 6 times 7 is 42. This one has to be 42 as well, and my numerator is 3 times 3, which is 9. Uh, the size of my pieces, 142nd of whatever it is. How many pieces? Well, 2 pieces plus 9 pieces is going to give me 11 42nds of whatever it is. Um, 11 is prime, so I know it's fully simplified. A lot of the tricks that teachers teach you for fractions don't work. They work with two fractions, they don't work with three. A lot of students have trouble with this. So let's do a three fraction addition here. So, um, I know the eight is three factors of two. Seven is prime. And six is two times three. So, uh, none of these have anything in, well, we got two twos here. This guy is going to need three factors of two. Because if it has three factors of two, it has one factor of two. So two times two times two in the numerator, two times two times two in the denominator. Uh, so now, all, oh, this one needs three factors of two, just like these two have. So I'm going to give it two more factors of two. Um, this one's good. Everybody's got the same as this guy. This denominator has a seven. So these guys are going to need a seven. This denominator has a 3. All right. Uh, so this is my common denominator. 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 7. Well, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. 7 times 8 is 56. 56 times 3. 6 times 3 is 18. 5 times 3 is 15. Plus 1 is 16. My denominator is 168. My numerator here is 7 times 1 times 3, which is 21. Here, my denominator is still 168, same factors, 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 7, 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 7. My numerator, I've got 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, um, well, 3 twos is an 8, and 2 times 3 is a 6, and 6 times 8 is 48. This one, again, my denominator is 168. My numerator 
is 5 times 2 times 2 times 7. Well, 5 times 2 is 10. 2 times 7 is 14, so 140. So my denominator stays 168. That's the size of my pieces. My numerator, 21 plus 48 plus 140. Uh, let's see, this one would be 188 together. 188 plus 21, um, 209. All right, so I know 168 is made out of factors of 2, factors of 3, and factors of 7. Uh, 209 is definitely not divisible by 2. Uh, 2 plus 9 is 11, so there's no factors of 3 in there. We should check the 7 just to be on the safe side. 7 doesn't go to 69. So, there's no factor of 7 either. I don't have to check every factor of every number, just the ones that would cancel. So I know that this is fully simplified, and we're going to leave it as an improper fraction, because in algebra, this is preferable. All right, for subtraction, we're basically just going to treat it like addition. I like to think of subtraction as adding the opposite. If I had 7 minus 3, I could say that was exactly the same thing as 7 plus a negative 3. Here I have 7, I'm losing 3, right? Here I have 7, and the negative means a loss of 3. These are the same. And when I'm dealing with fractions, I'm still going to take that minus sign, push it over, but I also want to push it up and put a plus sign in front of it. So here, I pushed the minus sign over, put a plus sign in front of it. Here, I took the minus sign and pushed it up to the 3. I owe 3 pieces. The size of the pieces are 15 You don't want the negative sign down here because this is just the size of your pieces. You want it up here with how many pieces you have. Same thing here. Uh, this negative sign, I'm going to push it over and up to the numerator. So instead of 7 24 minus 3 15 minus 1 12th, I have 7 24 plus a negative 3 over 15 plus a negative 1 over 12. These are equivalent expressions. They mean the same thing, uh, but you're less likely to lose that minus sign when it's up here. Because remember, the last thing we're going to do is add all our numerators together after we have a common denominator. Um, and if the negative sign is up here, that's just where I'm looking. So that's a good place for it. Uh, to find my common denominator, Let's see, 24 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. 15 is 3 times 5. And 12 is 2 times 2 times 3. All right, 24 and 12 are pretty close together, right? A factor of 2 would give me the same denominator for these guys. Um, they all already have a 3, so that's good. But this denominator has a 5. A factor of 5 and so I'm gonna need a factor of 5 in the other two so now I have three factors of 2 a factor of 3 and a 5 three factors of 2 a factor of 3 and a 5 here I just have the 3 and the 5 so I need three factors of 2 and three factors of 2 is the same thing as 8 I'm gonna save some space here all right let's gather my three terms together see what I've got so this term my denominator is um, 5 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. I'm always looking for 5 times 2s because that's a 10. Uh, 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. So 12 times 10 is 120 in the denominator. In the numerator, I've got 5 times 7, which is 35. Uh, here, I've got negative 3 times 8, so that's a negative 24. And again, this has to be 120 because these three factors of 2 is the same as this 8. And here, in my numerator, I've got negative 1 times 2 times 5, which gives me negative 10. And in the denominator, I've got the same factors, so it's got to have the same number. Um, I like to combine all my negatives and then add the positives. All the same size pieces, so I know my denominator is 120. Negative 24 plus negative 10 is negative 34. Negative 34 plus negative 35, that's just a positive 1. So my answer is 1 over 120. All right, give this one a try. You can probably do it without the primes, but practice with the primes. The next one's going to be harder. Pause the video, do it yourself, and then start it when you're ready. 
All right. If I This is prime. 10 is 2 times 5. 2 is prime. Every denominator needs to be 2 times 5. So I multiply this one times 5. I multiply this one times 2. Numerator and denominator. So my new fraction here is 4 tenths, 7 tenths, 15 tenths. I'm going to add them all up together. Uh, 7 plus 4 is 11. 11 plus 15 is 26 tenths. Now I know my denominator is 2 times 5 because I did it over and over again and I can clearly see there's a 2 in there. 2 times 13. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So my answer is 13 over 5. Alright, here's another one. Give it a try. Right. Uh, prime factorization of 9, 3 times 3. Prime factorization of 21, 7 times 3. Prime factorization of 18, 3 times 3 times 2. And now I'm just trying to give them all the same factors. They already all have a factor of 3. Um, so this one has two 3's and this one has two 3's, which means every denominator is going to need two 3's. So I give this one just one more. Now there's two factors of 3 here, two factors of 3 here, two factors of 3 here, right? All right, now this guy's got a 7. So this denominator needs a factor of 7, and this denominator needs a factor of 7. Again, always multiplying in pairs, one in the numerator, one in the denominator. Um, this denominator has a factor of 2 in it. So I'm going to multiply a factor of 2 to this one and to this one. And so my common denominator is 2 times 3 times 3 times 7. 2 times 3 times 3 times 7. 2 times 3 times 3 times 7. If they have the same factors, they are the same number. Now that I have the same denominator, I'm going to take these three terms that are being added together, and I'm going to simplify them. 2 times 7 times 5. 2 times 5 is 10. Times 7 is 70. So I get 70 over 126. Here, I've got 2 times 3, which is 6 times 4 is 24. And 7 times 1 is 7. And in the denominator, 2 times 7 times 3 times 3 is 126. 70 plus 24 plus 7 is 101. My denominator is made up of factors of 2, 3, and 7. Um, so I should check those three factors in the numerator before I decide it's fully simplified. Uh, 2 doesn't go in, right? It's not an even number. 1 plus 1 um, is 2, so 3 is not a factor in there. And I could check 7 really fast. No, 7 does not go in evenly. So 101 divided by 126 is fully simplified.